Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the Basics of Energy Monitoring webinar. My name is Beth, and I'll be your host this morning. We'd like to start off with a safety moment. Safety is a core value at PGE, and we want to remind you to be safe around electricity. As you consider installing or retrofitting new equipment, please keep safety in mind. We also want to encourage your family and staff to be prepared with an outage kit, and you can visit our website for more safety information. We also want to thank the Energy Trust of Oregon and the Northwest Energy Efficiency Alliance for their support in co-sponsoring this series of free energy efficiency trainings that are open to all Northwest utilities and their customers. Before I introduce today's presenter, I'd like to show you some tools you'll be using during the webinar. To the right of your screen, you'll see a couple of windows. The chat window at the top, followed by a polling window which will appear at the end of the webinar. If you have any questions during the webinar, you can submit them to me, the host, through chat, and I will ask them of the presenter at the end of the webinar. At the top left-hand corner of your screen, underneath the Quick Start menu, you'll see several tools, which you'll see here on the screen, and I will circle them. The text tool, the arrow tool, and a marker. And the presenter will ask you to use these on certain slides during the webinar. And now I'd like to introduce your presenter this morning, Greg Nelson. Greg is a mechanical engineer with more than 16 years experience in commercial and industrial system design and operation. Greg focuses on finding energy savings opportunities within businesses. He specializes in identifying energy efficiency improvement opportunities with businesses, schools, governments, and other nonprofit organizations. And now I'd like to hand the presentation over to Greg. Greg? Thank you, Beth, and I'd like to take a moment to thank all of you for attending today. And before I kick off the presentation, I'd like to ask you a question. Uh, so basically, using those tools that Beth had described earlier, uh, even a, a marker tool, uh, check off one of the boxes that applies to you. What, what describes your role in your business? And I'll give you a moment to do that. Okay, and um, this is pretty typical for the webinars that I've been involved in. We, we've definitely got a wide range of interests here, uh, and my goal today is to tailor this presentation to a wide interest and, and you know, different uh, concepts that different occup uh, occupations would be interested in related to this topic. And, and this topic is an introductory topic. If you want to learn more, uh, if I basically just whet your appetite and, and, and you want to learn more, uh, feel free to sign up to for our uh, presentations, our, our actual live uh, presenters who would present more details on this topic and other topics. We've got some great topics related to this, this topic. For example, building commissioning. And uh, it looks like a, a few of us in the audience today are more on the industrial side. And, and so for industrial customers, We've got a lot of presentations and seminars and webinars on fan systems, compressed air, a whole gambit of, of technologies that uh, combined with energy monitoring can help you reduce your energy consumption and, and use energy more wisely in, in your facility. Thank you very much for your participation there. I'll be looking for some more participation later on, but I'll move on. Um, actually, I'm going to ask you again, you know, why are you here? Use your uh, markers here to kind of highlight what your main interest is today in this topic. And then if you don't see your specific interest on this list, uh, take a moment to type in the chat what your goals are. By sharing your information in chat, it's going to help us mold our presentation for future audiences. And, and we've, we have a goal to continuously improve on our presentation. So it looks like uh, at least one of us has a mandate for energy reduction. I know there's a lot of companies, uh, big and small, that are, are trying to save 10% every year, 20% even. Some, some companies have very ambitious goals. Benchmarking is a, is a topic that we'll discuss briefly in this presentation, but uh, it's covered more in depth in our commissioning 
uh, presentations, both our webinar and our seminar. And sustainability is, is a topic that's big in the Northwest and, and other areas of the nation as well. And so those are right along the lines of, of what I would hope to address today. And so with that, I'll move on. If you didn't get a chance, uh, like I said, uh, to provide some input here, feel free to type it in the chat. I want to go over the agenda for this morning. And uh, the first thing that we're going to talk about is the plan. How can you use energy data that you've got available to you? And then we'll talk about energy terms. It's always helpful to understand what you're measuring and, and how you use energy within your facility before you can even begin to use the data to improve your energy performance. Then we'll move on to energy monitoring for energy savings and, and various opportunities to improve your, your energy usage profile. And then, like Beth mentioned early on, we'll have a question and answer session at the end of the presentation. So here's the plan that I referred to. As part of the plan for energy monitoring, you want to gather information, collect all the information that's available to you. This could be utility bills. And, and while a lot of the examples I'm going to give today are focusing on electric energy consumption and electric utility bills, uh, there's other bills that you may want to track, your water bill, your gas bill. Um, maybe there's some sewage flow rates that you want to track in, in your facility as well. And then consider interval metering. Uh, interval metering, I'll go into a little bit more detail later. It, it makes sense for typically larger customers, maybe not for the smaller customers. But uh, we'll cover a gambit of, of opportunities that you have to gather information. And, and it, as you'll see, it could be real, real sensitive, real, I'm sorry, real simple information for you to gather. Or it can be uh, complicated uh, where you want to use tools that are available either through your utility or through other service providers. And then uh, as part of the plan, we want to collect and use that energy data. Determine your expected load shape. And, and load shape uh, is a term that we like to use, but it can be in, in a wide variety of contexts. If you're looking, for example, at your annual energy usage, you may be looking at monthly utility bills. And, and so your expected load shape for monthly utility consumption, uh, for example, on the electric side, you may expect to see you know, lower energy consumption in the wintertime and, and higher in the summer if you've got natural gas heating, uh, because you're in the summer you're going to have a cooling load that's just not really there in the wintertime. And then vice versa, if you're looking at your gas consumption and you have natural gas heating, uh, you, you should expect a, a higher energy consumption in the wintertime and, and lower in the, win in the summer. And then with that, that load shape in mind, you want to create your load profile. Not every customer is the same. Even office buildings have nuances to them that can affect their load shape. And so you, you basically need to gather the data and see what type of consumption makes sense for your facility and, and where you feel like you can make some improvements. Like, like our uh, commissioning uh, seminars that we offer, this, this topic tends to generate questions that you need to answer. Uh, it, we're not going to be able to provide all your answers that, that you uh, have or, or that, that you need to reduce your energy consumption just purely based on data. You need to take a look at that data and see how, how usage patterns are being uh, you know, how your usage patterns are, are occurring in your facility and, and how you can move forward with opportunities to reduce areas. You're not going to reduce your consumption to zero, obviously. You're going to have to find opportunities where you know, for example, that maybe your, your lights are on in the evening and, and you can shut those off uh, when nobody's around, basically, like that. Uh, and then I, I've kind of covered all these other topics here. The other important thing to, to remember is you know, when you're gathering data and you're making changes to your facility, you want to continue to gather data to make sure you're on track. If you make a change and you expect your energy consumption to go down, but your monitoring suggests your energy consumption is going up, you, you probably want to change back or, or, or change course on your, your change that you made previously. So 
before we get into the nitty gritty on actual data usage, I want to talk about some basic electric bill terms. These are uh, charges that you'll find on any electric bill, whether you're a PGE customer or a, a, a customer of a different uh, electric utility. And uh, similar charges will also appear on, on natural gas bills. So typically on a utility bill, there's going to be an energy charge, and it's based on KWH. There's going to be a demand charge uh, if you're a large enough customer, and that's based on KW. And then there's a reactive demand charge. So before I leave this slide, I just basically want to do a quick rundown of what these, these units are. If we think about a 100 watt, watt light bulb, and we, we turn that on, and that's the only thing that we have on in our facility, then our facility, facility has a demand of 100 watts at that point in time. If we turn 10 of those lights on, we have 10 times 100 watts, or 1,000 watts of power being drawn. And that would be equivalent to one kW, one kilowatt of power consumption. And if we leave those 10 lights on for one hour, that'd be one kilowatt hour of energy consumption. So demand charge is, is more of an instantaneous uh, measurement. In, in the case of a utility, typically the demand charge is the average power usage over either a one half hour period in the case of PGE or a 15 minute period in, in the case of some other utility. Uh, and then reactive demand charge, we're not going to go into at all. Basically, uh, or I'll, I'll touch on it just a little bit here. Reactive demand occurs when you've got an inductive load in your system. And, and one of the biggest inductive loads in, in most facilities is, is motors. But as I'll point out here in a little bit, reactive demand is, tends to be a very, very small part of your total energy consumption cost. So here's an example of a Schedule 83 bill in, in PGE territory. This is what represents basically the front page of the bill. There's some useful information on here, and I'll kind of highlight it. Basically, uh, up here, we've got energy charges, and, and this shows that this particular customer consumed almost uh, 45,000 kilowatt hours in this, bill, in this bill period. And in this case, this bill period covers 33 days of service. That's an important point to note because your bill could range between about 28 days and 33 days. Anywhere in between there uh, is a typical billing period. And that, that's useful information to know because if you're just tracking purely the, the energy charges and, and you're not looking at the days of service, you may get a false impression of your energy consumption. If, for example, you compare a month where you have 33 days of service to a month that has 28 days of service, you may think that you're saving energy when you may actually be on a KWH per day basis, you may be consuming more energy. I'll move on to the what I would call the second page of the bill. And, and the second page typically has additional information more than this, but I wanted to highlight uh, some of the, the, the information that is, is good to look at on, on your bill. So we've got a basic charge of $30, and uh, you can go to your utilities website to get more information on you know, what these charges cover. But the thing I wanted to point out today is this basic charge is usually a pretty small portion of your bill. It, it's less than 1% in this case. Uh, the, by far the largest uh, portion of, of most utility bills is the actual energy usage charge. And, and you'll notice that that's it, it's charges based on your KWH consumption. It, it's your actual energy usage. It's, it's not your demand. So in this case, over 80% of the bill is uh, energy-related charges. Now we move on to demand charges. In this case, we've got different uh, measurements going on. We've got uh, 99 KW here, 99 again here, and then we've got 30 and, and 102. I don't want to belabor this. Basically, I want to highlight that you know it's, it's a relatively small portion of the bill. If you want to learn more about um, the breakdown of, of where these charges are coming from and where these different KW numbers uh, get uh, are found and, and how we come up with these, you know, one of the best spots to look at is the, the website because depending on who you are, you're going to be on a different rate schedule. So this is an example of Schedule 83, which is a, a large non-residential customer. If you're a, a small non-residential customer, you, you won't have any of these demand charges. 
and then if you're a, a larger, even larger than Schedule 83, which would typically be cons where you have a demand of over 200 kW, you'll have different demand-related charges. And But the, the general theme is on your utility bill, the bulk of the charges are based on your energy consumption, not your power or your K bar, your reactive demand. And then finally, I want to move on to the, the last page of the bill. We've got some, some adjustments on here, and basically these adjustments help utilities react to changes in the marketplace, whether they be, you know, bringing on renewable resources uh, as mandated by, you know, local jurisdictions or uh, reacting to changes in fuel costs, things of that nature. But the big thing to notice here is typically these, these adjustments are a very small portion of the bill. I didn't even bother to calculate um, what percentage they are. And then we've got taxes and fees, and typically those are, uh, again, a very, for a relatively small portion of the bill. Uh, we'll talk in a little bit, probably even on the next slide, about this, uh, this graph here. Um, so here's an example of what a customer could do if, if they were to get a hold of each monthly bill and document it, for example, in a spreadsheet. This is an example of a customer who's done that over a three-year period. And, you know, this is a great way to, to get your big toe into the waters of energy management. It doesn't involve any, uh, you know, consulting groups coming in. It's something that you can do on your own if you've got the time to do it. And so, for example, this customer could see that over the past three years, their energy consumption has steadily been going up. And maybe there's a good reason for that, and, and we go over some of those good reasons and bad reasons in uh, other uh, seminars and webinars, specifically the, the ones related to commissioning. But if you're like me, I like to see uh, pictures. And, and one way to get a picture is to actually graph that utility bill consumption information. And this is a, an example of a retail facility. It's different than the, the chart that I showed you earlier. It's a different customer, but you can start to see a, a load shape developing here. And uh, we'll, we'll see that there's a, you know, a peak in the summertime and, and then a trough in the wintertime. So that would suggest to me that this customer has natural gas heating and then, of course, uh, air conditioning as most of us have. I want to take a moment to have you use your markers to identify some other uh, changes that can be identified using this data. So take a moment and use that highlighting tool and, and highlight a spot or two. I've already given you a hint here. Um, maybe there's some other spots you want to talk about. I appreciate your input, and uh, so let's let's first talk about the elephant in the room. Um, we've got consumption that has taken a recent dip, or at least a recent dip in this this time frame that this customer has been monitoring. Uh, we we see a noticeable decline in 2010 uh, in energy consumption starting in March, and and that decline. Um, stays steady, that, that reduction in energy consumption stays steady for several months into the summer. And so this is an example of this particular retail customer did a lighting retrofit. Uh, it was a big box retail store, and um, it this particular location changed out metal halide fixtures. Those are the, the round fixtures that you typically see in, in, in retail facilities with high ceilings. And, and replace them with uh, high-efficiency T5 um, fluorescent fixtures. And this type of change-out is eligible for incentives through the Energy Trust and through most other uh, energy efficiency programs, uh, whether you be in Oregon or in other states. So before you implement a lighting project or, or any energy efficiency project, talk to your utility. If, if you're in Oregon, talk to Energy Trust of Oregon and We'll, we'll show you some contacts later on uh, that you can call if you've got some specific questions about a project. But the reason why I say 
before you implement is most utility programs, uh, or many, including Energy Trust of Oregon, uh, many programs require pre-approval before you purchase anything. So it, it's a incentive, it's not an automatic rebate. You need to show that you qualify, basically. Uh, so now let's now that we've addressed that that big change, let's talk about some of these other changes. Yeah, if you graphed multiple years of consumption, you're going to see changes, you know, changes over time. In this case, this customer has graphed kilowatt hours per day, so we've we've avoided that that issue that I addressed earlier, where maybe there's 28 days in the billing, billing cycle, maybe there's uh, 33 days or any number of days in the billing cycle. So these fluctuations could be due to weather, they could be due to uh, changes in occupied hours, maybe, you know, in in this case 2007, this customer was open more hours than in 2008. And so those are the kind of questions that you may need to ask yourself as you gather information. Um, and the other thing to highlight here is, you know, your peak annual energy consumption, the, the, the month of highest energy usage may vary either in, in, in magnitude or in time. Some customers may peak in September, if even if they still have a, a relatively similar HVAC system to a customer that peaks in August. It all depends on when the bill is processed. Some, some bills may be processed earlier in the month, some later in the month. And so there, there will be some fluctuations. But as you can see in this trend, particularly for commercial type customers, your energy consumption is, is relatively steady if, if you don't do any major modifications to your equipment or your, to your hours of operation. Or I, would, I shouldn't say steady, I should say consistent. You know, this customer is consistently seeing highs in the summertime and lows in the, summer t in the wintertime uh, on their electric bill. So do you have time to do that? Can you get a hold of your electric bill month after month and enter it into a spreadsheet? If you got time, it, it's, a, it's a worthwhile uh, effort. As, as you can see, you know, if you implement an energy efficiency project, if you've got data, you can prove to your management that the project is doing some good work or you have the opportunity anyway to prove that the project is doing some good, giving you some good energy savings and cost savings. Um, but there are other opportunities. If you go to PGE's website, if you're a PGE customer, you can register your account online, and that will give you the ability to automatically, or, or you know, after a few clicks anyway, download up to three years of utility consumption. It's monthly utility data, and it, it's uh, relatively easy to download that to a spreadsheet. And if you're good with spreadsheets, you can develop these graphs that I've been showing you. So let's say you don't even have time to do that. Here's one tool that you could use. And, and so this is the example of, of that graph that you see on your electric bill. And it, and it shows up on your natural gas bill, too. So you can use this, the same technique. Uh, if, if you only got you know, a couple hours a year to look at tracking energy usage, what you can do is grab one of your bills. One of your bills is going to have 13 months of at a glance energy consumption information on it and that's in the form typically in the form of this graph or something very much like it you draw a line representing the average energy consumption over those 13 months of billing so in this case this customer's uh, energy consumption is uh, 1.4 megawatt hours per day um, and then you do some simple math so you take that kilowatt hour per day number multiply it by 365 and you come up with this, this annual energy consumption of uh, over 500,000 kilowatt hours per year. Just as a note, you know, this relatively quick calculation got me to within 2% of the actual annual energy consumption at this facility. So, like I said, if all you've got is a couple of minutes, this is an opportunity for you to begin tracking energy consumption and, and you can use that. Granted, th there's there's relatively few opportunities for you to use an annual energy consumption uh, piece of information. But for example, you could log on to um, Energy Star website and begin to benchmark your facility. And like I said, we'll talk more about benchmarking in subsequent 
webinars and seminars. So here's another quick assessment that you can do with your, your graph. If you've got a few more minutes, uh, you, can, you can draw a few more lines on, on your annual uh, bar chart that you get with your utility bill. So this is an example of a commercial customer who has natural gas heating and a package rooftop, typ typical like for, for most um, commercial facilities out there. So whether it be a split system or, or a package rooftop, and, and, and again, some of these topics we'll discuss in more detail in other seminars, but I wanted to quickly show you an opportunity. So an economizer is a tool that a HVAC system, a heating, ventilating, and air conditioning system can use to offer you what's called free cooling. It's not really free, but it, it's, it's reduced cost cooling. Uh, what it does is it brings in outside air when the outside air is cool enough to, to do the cooling for you, and, and, and it allows you to take load off of your compressors that are in your HVAC system. So if we, if we model a typical commercial facility, and, and I'm giving you examples of commercial facilities because even if you're an industrial facility, you may have some commercial aspects that you want to, to track, and, and so therefore commercial examples apply well for an introductory course. So typically, like we already discussed, 100% represents your, your highest energy con consumption. And in this case, we've got this graph is, is uh, kilowatt hours per day. And so our highest consumption happens in the summertime. And then our low consumption happens uh, in the winter months and, and even in the, what I would call the shoulder months. And in this case, if we take a typical uh, commercial customer, this, this low period of time is typically going to be about 80% of what the peak energy usage is in the facility. And the thing to note is it's relatively consistent. So now let's look at an actual utility bill. So this is a bar chart that I've, I've pulled from an actual utility bill. So, you know, there's, there's other factors that are going in, coming into play. There's, you know, changes in seasonal temperature. There's, there's changes that, that people do to affect energy consumption, but as you can see, we do have a relatively similar shape to our modeled condition. And in this case, the peak energy consumption was 171, and the, the trough, as I would call it, is, the, is 140. Do some quick math, we come up with an 82%, which is pretty close to our modeled 80%. And I would say that the economizer appears to be functioning in this, in this system. Not only did we get close to our 80% number, but we're also seeing a relatively consistent energy consumption uh, in the November, December, through January, March, April, and even into May timeframe. So now let's take a look at an example of a customer whose economizer probably isn't working. This, again, we've got a, on the right-hand side, we've got a, a shape for a, a commercial system that, that does not have an economizer. Either, either the economizer is, is non-existent or it's not functioning. And so unlike the previous case, we've got uh, varying, we don't have any flat times. We don't have flat energy consumption for a, a consistent period of months. And then let's take a look at the numbers. So 100% again happens in the, in the summertime. Uh, now our minimum consumption is, is for a shorter period of months and it's, it's closer to 75% of, of the peak energy consumption. Now let's look at the actual customer data. 309 is our peak. Our minimum is, is about 225. So like I said before, you do the math, we come up with 73, which is close to our 75%. The economizer likely is not functioning. And, and I, I'm an engineer, so I'm using wiggle words. But here's another thing to look at. We don't have a, a flat period of energy consumption in November and December and we don't have a consistently flat energy consumption into March, I would say that maybe this customer has several energy, uh, several HVAC systems and, and maybe some of them are, have malfunctioning or non-existent economizers. So let's revisit that um, retail customer that we talked about before. If you've got several years of utility data, you can still do that same calculation. You draw the line at the peak, you draw the line at the trough. In this case, we're drawing the line at the trough before the lighting project was implemented. We do the math, we come up with our 80% when we take the peak 
divided or took the you know the trough divided by the peak, and I would say that the economy monitor appear, appears to be functioning. However, we've got this period of time in November, December, which we would expect flat energy consumption, uh, and it's it's not quite there. And so again, this may be a case where some but not all of the systems are um, economizing, or maybe this customer has some refrigeration systems that typically don't lend themselves to economizers like uh, HVAC systems do. And by refrigeration systems, I mean uh, you know, cold storage or maybe this is a grocery store. <laughs> but again, th those are some questions you can start asking yourself once you have the data. So this is the first step in the plan, right? We talked about gathering information, collecting and tracking your utility bills. And, and if you do nothing after uh, looking at this seminar, I encourage you to, to use some of the tools that we've already talked about. If you do nothing else, I should say. So what is interval data? So if you want more information than you can get from your monthly utility consumption, you, you now have to consider more detailed interval data. You know, in, in theory, a utility bill is interval data. It's just energy consumption over a one month period, typically about a one month period. Typically when we talk about interval data, we're talking about gathering utility consumption on an hourly basis or a 15 minute basis. And, and these increments of time that you wanna look at kinda depend on how much you wanna invest in interval data. If you're a small company, you probably don't want to invest in, in installing meters for interval data monitoring, but you may have some opportunities to get a hold of interval data. So, you know, log into your utilities website and see what sort of information is available to you. Uh, I'm an engineer, I like data, so if, if I've got some, some additional information available to me, I'm gonna try to use it. I, I'm, I'm tracking my energy consumption at my house, and uh, I'm, I'm doing it on a, at least monthly basis, if not, not uh, even more often. So most industrial customers and even large commercial customers, if you're a property manager, you probably want to get 15 minute interval data or, or at least hourly uh, interval data. And we'll talk about more about you know what you can do with that here in subsequent slides. So as we get into load shapes, one load shape that you can look at if you've got interval data of, of hourly or, or or better, smaller, incre smaller increments, you can take a look at your daily energy usage and how it changes over the course of the day. I'm gonna take a moment to highlight how I typically use energy in my home and my family uses energy in the home. So here in the early morning hours, I'm, I'm typically at a relatively low energy consumption. And then by five o'clock, I start getting up to get ready to go to work. Maybe I feel like I need to do some quick laundry before I go and so I put, some, a load in the in the dryer, but then I leave and, and things go back to normal. The coffee maker doesn't take much energy, so we're, we're dropping back down to our relatively low energy consumption. Um, now the, the kids are maybe getting ready for school. They turn on more lights in the house and, and maybe they do some more laundry and, and so maybe there's another trough and uh, not much is going on during the day. Maybe there's a little wiggle here, uh, but then we come back and we have dinner and we we turn on the oven and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, and then I'm in bed by, by 9, 10 o'clock, but my, uh, my daughter will typically be awake, so our energy consumption maybe stays relatively high, and then finally um, everyone's asleep and lights are out. So that's the shape of my daily energy consumption or, you know, a rough, uh, rough idea of what it looks like. I want to now take a moment to let you use the drawing tool, particularly the marker, to draw what you feel like the load shape of your daily energy consumption at your facility is. And forgive me, I, I do want to allow you to provide input, but I, I also don't want to run out of time. So I may cut this short if we don't get too many examples here pretty quick. Okay, so we got some good examples here showing up and so that, that darker line would suggest what I would call a, a more typical retail, commercial um, type of consumption. You know, we've got low consumption during the, the morning hours as lights come on and, and, and workers come into the building. 
and HVAC systems come on, you'd, you'd expect consumption to ramp up. And then um, in the summertime particularly, you would see consumption rise even more as cooling loads increase in the bu building. And then wh whatever your closing time is, if you have a closing time, uh, you would expect to see uh, energy consumption trail off. That, that red example is an interesting one that you wouldn't typically see in, in a commercial facility, but maybe they've got, you know, maybe it's a seasonal um, operation. You know, irrigators, for example, may be irrigating uh, in the afternoons, uh, and so they could definitely have a shape that looks something like that red one. And then the green one, of course, is, is a facility that's probably operating two shifts, and the, you know, the night shift may consume a little bit less than the day shift mainly due to changes in cooling loads or reductions in production, things of that nature. So th there's plenty of um, opportunities to look at your load shape, and any shape could be right for you. You just need to look at it and see if it makes sense. If you know that you're operating one shift a day and you have a consumption line that looks like the green line, um, maybe you need to make some changes in, in the evening hours especially to drop that energy consumption. Okay. Thank you for that uh, input, and I'm going to move on. So here's a load profile that you might get if you were getting interval data. And I should mention that there are a wide variety of, of sources that will allow you to get access to interval data. Um, the things that you need to consider is how much do you want to invest in it, because it's, it's not anything typically that uh, is, is free of charge. Either there's a time investment in, in, in getting the information and using the information, um, but also typically there's, especially for larger customers, there, there's an investment of, of a cost. You need to determine what sort of equipment you need to monitor. Maybe you don't want to monitor your full building, but you, maybe you want to monitor specific pieces of equipment. So how many meters do you want to buy? And then how many meters do you want to pay monthly charges on to, to continuously track and, and gather that utility consumption? But here's an example of uh, what I would call a, a large customer. You know, they're consuming over a thousand kilowatt hours in peak demand. And uh, so we've got that typical relatively low energy consumption during the morning hours. People come into work, ramps up. And then here at noontime, that's probably when um, either a chiller or some sort of cooling load kicked in as the, the day went on. So this is probably a, a summertime uh, load profile. If you, if you are tracking your daily energy consumption, you're likely going to see changes between, you know, seasonal changes between summer, winter, and, and fall and spring. And then, like I said, you know, if you have one shift a day of operation, you should really expect to see energy consumption drop off in the evening. And how far and how fast that drops off kind of depends on what uh, activities are going on. If you're in an office building, maybe you have janitorial services that are still occupying the space and, you know, leaving lights on and things of that nature that would um, prevent you from ramping down as quickly as other buildings that, that don't have that janitorial service. So typical problems that you can identify with interval daily interval metering and, and, and monitoring and, and review. So like we talked about, maybe you feel like your systems are starting up too soon. If you start seeing uh, your HVAC systems, for example, coming on at 5 a.m. when you know you're not getting your free first people into the office until 8, then maybe you want to take a look at your controls for your HVAC system and make some adjustments or make some adjustments to your lighting control systems if you have lighting control systems. So evening shutdown, slow or late, you know, we already kind of touched on that. You know, is it slow for a reason or is it slow for well, I mean, it's slow for a reason, right? But is it slow for a reason that you can change or, or because of something that you can change and, and reduce your energy consumption? And then weekend schedules. That, that is key, especially for anyone who's a property manager. If you've got multiple buildings, you've got multiple opportunities for things to go wrong with your control systems, either your lighting controls or your HVAC controls. And, and so particularly if, if you've got multiple, multiple buildings that you're looking at, um, it's often a good opportunity for you to at least explore some of these interval metering opportunities to see, you know, it, it would at least allow you to compare one building to the next and, and see 
where you need to concentrate your efforts on uh, either controls or, or behavioral modifications, you know, encouraging people to turn off lights and things of that nature. So equipment starting and stopping when no one's around. I mean, that that is a kind of a what I would consider a side benefit. Often, um, starting and stopping of equipment m may need to happen, but it may not need to happen. We, we've been able to see customers' data that would suggest that either water heaters or chillers are cycling way too often, which may not you know, drastically affect your energy consumption, but it could, you know, af affect the longevity of the equipment. If, if a compressor in a chiller is, is cycling on and off, you know, rapidly, it's going to rapidly decrease the life of that chiller or, or require some major maintenance uh, quickly down the road. And uh, we've already kind of addressed, you know, controls programmed wrong. You, you can if you're tracking daily energy usage, you can see if your HVAC systems aren't shutting off on the weekends, things of that nature. So here's a, a screenshot of Energy Expert. Energy Expert is a interval metering tool that you can get through PGE. Uh, I want to take a, a moment to stress that Energy Expert is not the only tool out there, but it, I wanted to give you some examples, and, and this was an easy example for me to provide for you. Um, so in this case, this is a, a report card of sorts. It's, it's the daily energy usage for a facility, and it, and it also looks forward uh, to the next five days of energy consumption at the facility. So at the top of the page, we've got our temperatures. In this case, in the red, we've got a 41 degree temperature. So this is a winter month, right? And, and we can confirm that by looking at the date. So the high was 41 degrees, the low was 24 degrees. And our peak energy consumption, or our peak power consumption, occurred at just after 10 o'clock, uh, and it was just over 1,000 kilowatts. So with, with these report cards, you know, you can, you can be emailed these report cards on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, or on a, on a you know, you can, you can set some triggers to automatically email you these. If you don't want them every day, you, you don't have to get them every day. In this case, this customer has um, has tracked their energy consumption over at least a year period, and so the the, the energy expert software has able to, has been able to identify that on this day their energy consumption was higher than it should be. And there's some other opportunities for them to look at. They can now look at a quick snapshot of their uh, daily load shape. They can also see that, you know, based on this energy consumption and the, the forecasted weather, uh, we would expect to see another high uh, energy usage tomorrow. And then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we would expect it to get back to normal. So, you know, while this isn't a, a perfect tool, it's not going to always diagnose or, or, you know, predict your energy consumption pattern, um, it is a, a quick at a glance that will allow you to at least get some addi additional information to see if, if your high energy consumption is, is something that you need to immediately address or does it appear to be related to the weather. Maybe, maybe these weather patterns are, maybe you're experiencing colder weather than normal. I mean, 24 degrees is a relatively low uh, temperature and that could be part of the reason why this day had high energy consumption. Moving on, here's another snapshot of what you can observe in Energy Expert, and you know other providers have similar tools that you can use. This is kind of the month at a, at a glance, and so for October 2009, this customer could see, and it looks like they're in office building. So we've got that typical office pattern uh, during the weekdays. We've got high consumption during the day and low at night. Uh, but you can start to see maybe some patterns, and, and one of the patterns that the, the software allows you to immediately see is, you know, what's my use, usage look like? In this case, on Thursday the 1st, our usage was low. We can tell it because it's blue color-coded. Friday it was relatively normal. It's okay. And then Sunday it was high. And, and even at a glance, you can see, well, this Sunday was 
a little bit different than this Sunday. We had a, a peak going on, and, and maybe that peak happened for a reason. You know, maybe you were doing some maintenance in the facility, um, but this gives you an opportunity to, to to look at this information, and you know, if you saw that that same peak on every subsequent Sunday, maybe that would start to even point you to uh, some change that was made to your control system, maybe in your HVAC system. Maybe, you know, on, on the 4th you were doing some maintenance, but on the 11th that peak maybe still happened. Um, and, you know, you did some maintenance on the 4th and, and overrode the controls, but didn't change them back to their normal operation. So, again, just a, a quick snapshot of some of the tools that are out there. And so as I wrap up the presentation, I wanted to, you know, remind you of what the plan is. The plan is to gather your information, track your bills, and, and track your bills in, in any way that you feel is fit. As, as I've shown you, you don't have to track hourly or, or 15 minute interval consumption to find useful ways to use the information. Maybe it's an annual look at your annual energy consumption or it's a monthly look at your energy consumption. Um, you know, talking from experience, I've seen customers, and, and we've got examples of customers on our website that have used uh, interval metering. Um, for example, like I mentioned, anytime you've got multiple buildings, we've got examples of, of schools, school districts that have taken advantage of interval metering to save energy in their facilities. Uh, you know, look at those trends, see what trends make sense, see what trends are troubling. Uh, and, and so when you collect the data, you've got to use the data, right? So whether you're doing interval metering or monthly energy tracking, you want to look at what is the right energy consumption for you. you know, if you are looking at monthly energy consumption and you do have a couple of years worth of data, you can, you can see if you're trending um, towards an increase in energy consumption or a decrease in energy consumption. And, and like we kind of touched on, you know, maybe it makes sense that your energy consumption is going up. Maybe you've added square footage to your facility or you've uh, increased your hours of production, things of that nature. And then create your load, load profile. Uh, this definitely isn't a one-time thing, so you, you need to continuously evaluate the data in order for it to be useful for you. You know, track your consumption, document changes that you make based on things you've seen in your consumption data and um, make sure that the changes you make are, are making good sense for you. <coughs> if you're interested in learning more about uh, you know, Energy Expert, you can go to PGE's Energy Information Services on the web, or here's a contact for Will Miller. He's a great guy. Um, you can email any questions you have. And so here, here's just an, another type of graph that you can get through Energy Expert or uh, some of the other interval metering um, software that's out there. So in this case, we've got um, electric energy consumption, and, and this customer has, has been also, in addition to tracking their energy consumption, they've been tracking their production. So if you're an industrial facility, oftentimes, you know, weather may affect your energy consumption, but, but more often than that, it's how many widgets are you producing or how many pounds of material are you processing that's going to affect your energy consumption. So as you track energy consumption, maybe you want to start tracking some of these other pieces of data to make sure that your energy consumption makes sense. And then to kind of close out my portion of the presentation, I wanted to talk to you about, you know, opportunities for free energy consultation. As, as we pointed out, um, energy Trust offers technical assistance to customers and has programs available. If you have a commercial facility that you want to look at, uh, contact Paula Conway if you've got questions about how to participate in Energy Trust programs. If you're an industrial or an agricultural customer, call John Maloney. Um, and if you just have any questions at all, you know, feel free to call either one of these and, and we'll get you directed to um, the proper person who can help you through the, the programs that are available for energy efficiency. And, and like I touched on, it's, it's not just lighting. It's um, maybe if you're an industrial customer, maybe you want to look at your compressed air systems, maybe your fan system. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities out there. Maybe you already know what those opportunities are, but maybe you want to learn more about what is available through 
Energy Trust programs. And, and like it, it says here on the bottom of the slide, if you're not a PGE customer or if you're not in Oregon, you know, contact your local ut utility. Odds are that they are going to have some programs available for you for helping you pay for your energy efficiency projects. Thank you very much. And with that, I'll hand it off to Beth. Thank you, Greg. And we'd like to remind everyone of some upcoming webinars and uh, seminars that we have. You'll see them here on the screen. The uh, four-hour free webinar that uh, Greg mentioned that covers uh, some of this information and, and more is on November the 14th in Wilsonville. And you can visit our website at energyeducationcenter.com to find out more. Before we proceed to the question and answer portion of the webinar, I'd like to remind you that you can continue to submit questions to me, the host, through chat, and I'll ask them of Greg. And also, within a few days, we'll send you a follow-up email with a recording of this session and the PDF of the materials. And if you don't receive that for any reason, please let us know at pge.seminars at pgn.com. At this moment, I'd like to draw everyone's attention to the feedback uh, poll that I've just opened here and should appear in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. If you could take a few moments to fill that out, we really value your feedback and do use it to improve future webinars. And now for the question and answer portion, our first question. Greg, I think you may have covered this uh, somewhat, but what is the charge for Energy Expert and how do I sign up? Yeah, and, and so I'm going to take uh, the easy way out and, and say for specific charge information, talk to Will Miller. Um, but, you know, in general, there's going to be a charge based on the number of meters you want to monitor. Typically, if you're participating in Energy Expert, you're going to be monitoring at a, at a meter level, a PGE meter level. level. And, uh, but Will could also talk to you about if, if you want to sub-meter. And, and sub-metering happens when you uh, want to monitor a specific piece of equipment or a specific series of, of pieces of equipment that, you know, maybe, for example, you know that your dust collection systems are your major energy consumer and you want to monitor their energy consumption. So there are opportunities for monitoring beyond the meter. And uh, so that, that's the reason why I, I don't want to give you specifics. But you know, there's going to be a, a, a setup fee, usually less than $500, depending on you know the number of meters that you're going to uh, be looking at. And then there's a, a monthly fee. And, and that's going to vary depending on how many meters you're looking at, too, typically. So uh, I hope that is a good enough answer for you. And if you got more uh, questions related to that, yeah, like I said, call Will Miller. Thank you, Greg. And our next question is, um, can I download energy consumption data from PGE's website? Yeah. Uh, the, the quick answer is any customer can download um, monthly utility consumption from our website. And, and like I alluded to earlier, um, you go to portlandgeneral.com. On the right-hand side of the, the web page, there's a, a login, and, and there's an opportunity to register your account. And, and that's not to create a, a utility account with PGE. This is if you already have a utility set up with PGE. Um, you, you now take that utility bill, your account number, and some other information, and create a, a web account. And through that portal, you can download up to three years of utility data if, you're, if you've are if you been a customer for that long, for example. And then even beyond that, there are some opportunities, uh, typically for Schedule 32 and, and Schedule 7 customers, you may be able to get access to even uh, smaller increments of data, you know, less than um, monthly intervals. Um, if you're a larger customer not on Schedule 32 or, or Schedule 7, uh, typically, you want to go um, through the interval metering services, either through Energy Expert or through a vendor um, to, to get that, that interval data. Um, and then, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but you know, Northwest Natural and, and other utilities also have the ability to log in on their website and, and get monthly use utility data, and, and often several years' worth of data if you've been a customer with them for longer than a year. Thank you, Craig. And the next question is, what rules of thumb can I use when looking at my energy consumption information to help me determine if I need to make some changes? Yeah. Um, I think, you know, 
that that question is is very nuanced. So I'm going to give you a nuanced answer. So let's take, for example, a commercial office building, and and you can get some more information in in subsequent seminars, particularly the tune-up and commissioning seminar. But a, a typical office building is going to consume about 19 kilowatt hours per square foot per year. What does that translate to? Like, for example, if you have access to interval data, well, an office building you might expect to consume about one watt per square foot when it's unoccupied, and then it may peak at about four watts per square foot. And and these are just real rough numbers because any number of things can throw those off. If if you if you, for example, for whatever reason, don't have air conditioning. I think most commercial customers would have air conditioning. But if you don't have air conditioning, maybe your peak is, is down at 3 kW. If you've got electric heating, maybe your peak is closer to, to 5 kW, um, 5 watts per square foot. Um, and, and that would typically occur in the wintertime. So, you know, those are some quick rules of thumb. Uh, if you want to learn more about specific pieces of equipment, whether it be compressed air or fan systems, those have, you know, different loads associated with them. And you can get more information about, you know, rules of thumb that can, you can use for energy monitoring uh, from specific seminars that are dedicated to the, that type of technology, either compressed air or fan systems or pump systems of that nature. Thanks, Greg. And um, the last question we have here, I think you may have already answered, um, but it's how much does it cost to get interval data? Um, it, it's going to vary. You know, Energy Expert has its set of prices for setup and, and monthly service, and just about any other software provider is going to have their own costs. So I would encourage you, if, if you're interested in getting the data, and, and again, typically it's only going to make sense for you to invest in inter interval data if you have a large facility or if you have multiple buildings that you need to track energy consumption and manage energy consumption on. If, if you are a building energy manager who uh, has too many items on your plate to, to look at interval metering, it's not going to make sense for you to, to monitor energy consumption because the data itself is not going to help you solve problems. The data is going to help you answer and ask questions that are going to help you manage your energy consumption. So it, it comes down to, you know, do your homework, look at the various options that are available to you, you know, do some searching on the web, um, and, and see what's best for you. Like we mentioned, uh, if, if you're a smaller customer on Schedule 32 and, and Schedule 7, Schedule 7 would be for residential customers and Schedule 32 would be for commercial um, and, and small industrial customers that consume you know, typically have a demand less than 30 kW. You may be able to log into your utilities website and, and get some interval data um, that, that, that you could work with. The, the issue there is that you need to invest more time. If you're not going to invest in a software system that's going to create these graphs for you, you, you need to invest the time to use that data and graph that data to make it useful for you. Thanks, Greg. That was our last question. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today, and we'll stay online just a little bit. In case you have any additional questions, you can continue to submit them to Greg and I through chat, to, excuse me, to me through chat. Um, and we look forward to seeing you at a future webinar. Thank you.